Okay, so uh, both stand up portable. We're going to go over the procedure, how to disassemble, change the uh, docking connector board and reassemble. Now, there's another video which we just shot, which shows the diagnostics. Um, and I really do recommend you check the diagnostic video before you actually start um, deciding you need a connector because the best thing to do is decide what's wrong before you try and fix it, okay? So do watch the other video before you follow this procedure or you order a board from us. Um, to recap, if you plug the thing in and it beeps, it's a pretty good sign, but watch the other video, it's all detailed there. If we move over here, we can see that uh, these are the tools that we require to do the job. There's the torque screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, a pair of tweezers or a sharp object. Obviously you're going to need a pod to test it and also need a remote control to make sure that you've actually uh, got remote functionality once you've reassembled the dock. So here it is. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the battery. Make sure the battery's not on. If you leave the battery on, the unit's got power on it and it's not a good idea to start disconnecting the, the uh, gubbins inside. Um, otherwise sparks might fly. You won't get hurt but um, it could be uh, curtains for your dock actually if you do that. So the first thing we're going to do is you've got these four rubber feet on the base. Um, I'm just going to go through the procedure showing you how to change this board. So if you if you just um, put something sharp underneath the rubber feet and gently peel off, peel it off slowly and you can see the rubber foot comes adrift. And just put that to one side and repeat that with the other three or yeah, it's until all four are removed, okay? If you do it slowly, you're more likely to leave the paint behind. On occasion, the rubber can take the paint off as well, in which case you're going to need a little bit of double-sided tape or adhesive just to stick the pad back on reliably, otherwise you'll find it might drop off. So that's all, all four taken off. There you go. And underneath, four screws. Now, we're not going to take these screws out, but what we are going to do is loosen them to enable this base plate, which is rubber-mounted. You can see it rocking there on these rubber mounts. We're going to undo these four screws, probably about two turns each, to enable us to withdraw the base plate upwards and to allow enough room for the docking moulding to come out of the uh, the half moon moulding that swivels around. So I'll show you what to do. So first of all, we're just going to undo these, maybe two turns each. Take my I'm gonna use an electric screwdriver because clearly I've picked up the wrong wrong size. Yeah, so that's a, a good thing to avoid is to make sure that your screwdriver fits before you start making the video. Okay, so you can see now they're all undone, maybe two turns. You can see the left tops of the screws just about level with the top of the plate. That one's still a bit low, so we're gonna undo that one a little bit more. What you don't want to do is take these right out. If this plate comes off, then it's a real um, fag to put the thing back together. So there we are. We've undone the screws. The tops of the screws are about level with the top surface of the plate. That's as far as you need to do them, okay? Now, we can turn our attention to these three screws here. These hold the docking connector in and the plastic moulding. And what you need to do is get your hand, thumb and forefinger, and hold it together so that when you take the screws out, it won't come apart until you are absolutely ready to... Um, to take it apart otherwise there'll be springs and bits and pieces pinging out all over the place and uh, you know I, I, one obviously good practice is to make sure that you um, do this on a flat table uh, over a flat surface so if bits do fall out they drop onto the table and you can find them so pop out the three screws this one Two. There's number three. Okay, so they're not actually uh, dropping out very easily. So we're just going to give those a little shake and see if they can be encouraged to drop out into the table. And they can't. So they're stuck in there. We're going to leave those in there for a moment then. Hope they fall out on the table in a controlled way. Alternatively, we can get our tweezers. If you do leave them in there, make sure you don't drop them. more encouragement. There 
There we go. So all three screws removed, holding it together all the time so nothing is going to pop out. So turn the dock over and uh, pull the plate. We're pulling the plate forward. You can see there's a gap here now because this plate has moved maybe a quarter of an inch or five millimetres, four and a half millimetres in that direction. Tilt the dock forward and then you can let go at this point. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is open up the front of this and show you what's inside. And this is a good, um, hopefully we can get a good enough picture of this Nico to allow the customers to freeze frame. And you can see what we've got is a spring, can you see that? Yep. A spring sitting on top of this plastic cam and between this, oh, there we go, sorry about that. Between the spring and the cam is a plastic nylon washer. Now that little tiny flat washer in there, can you see that on the screen? I'm zooming. Maintain focus. <laughs> I'm trying to. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I'll take it out on the desk. But anyway, so you've got spring, cam, sorry, spring, plastic washer, and then cam, and it's all sitting over a boss. And the boss it's sitting on is the is the boss, the plastic boss that where the screw goes through. And to put it back together, the reverse operation is to drop that back in there. But you can see, what we're going to do now is just to take hold of this and gently lift out the board. Okay? Now you can see, as I've lifted that out, you can see the uh, spring has dropped out. So let's just uh, withdraw the spring. Let's withdraw the cam, or the washer, should I say. There we are, there's the plastic washer over there. And then finally, take out the plastic cam. This is where it can get a bit fiddly. I'm trying to hold it so that you can see what's going on. There you go. So if that's clear, you've got your three screws just here, your plastic washer, your spring, and your cam. Okay. If your spring has got a little spur sticking out, it's probably a later unit and it doesn't have this washer. So if you don't have that washer, don't worry because it may have the slightly different design of spring fitted, okay? Or someone else has taken it apart before and lost the washer. So if we transfer our attention back to here, you can see this is the, uh, the offending board, okay? Now, these little ribbon connectors, can you see that, Nico? Mm -hmm. Those just push in there and um, these white bits stay on the board. <laughs> They're not plugs that you pull off. So to, to disengage these, you just grasp the ribbon cable carefully. And the other thing you need to do is make sure you don't pull these ribbons. If you get hold of this board and just pull it forward, these ribbons will get longer. Ribbons inside the dock will be pulled forward. And when you put it back together again, you'll have too much ribbon down in this area. And what happens is too much ribbon down here and not enough inside the dock is that these ribbons get fouled when the dock rotates. So you want to be very careful not to, um, before you start yanking this around, is to make sure you don't withdraw those ribbons any further uh, from the dock body. So you grab hold of them and you just pull them out. Oh, I'm doing it left-handed because Nico's standing there. And there you go. So that's your old docking board. And then we can put that to one side, no longer required. Now to do this operation, if you buy this board, um, and it doesn't fix your problem. It probably will, but if it doesn't, you can send it back for a refund. Everything sold from Vivo is supplied on a buy and try basis. All you're not paying for is your postage. We're, we've got an efficient refund service. Um, so you don't have to worry. It, it, chances are you'll be up and running anyway. So there's the new board. And the only difference between that, the, uh, the original board and this board is that um, we've got these collars on the connectors, which you need to lift forward. You can see that, Nico. These need to be in the out position, and what they do is allow you to plug the ribbon in. It just makes it easier to, to plug the ribbon in. The ribbon will go in, in there with pretty much no force at all, and then when it's in position, you lock it down by pushing these connecting lugs, collars we call them, back in, okay? So before you start to try and plug your ribbon cable in, make sure the collars are out, otherwise the end of the ribbon won't go in. And clearly you've got to make sure that you plug them in in the same orientation as they came out, which is with the shiny connections go towards the open face of the collar, so towards my left, uh, this side. So the connectors are here and the connections are on that side of the connector. And it's, it's pretty much the natural way they'll drop back in because that's the way it's intended to be. So 
you'd have to be fairly determined to plug them in the wrong way. Look, if I offer the connector in, and just take my tweezers, push that one out of the way with my finger. A bit of luck, this will work. I have to say I haven't done many of these myself, from a distance anyway, and there you can see in goes the ribbon cable, it's dropped in. Going to then just push these down, click, click, collars are down, ribbon cables nicely in, you can see a nice even row of contacts protruding, so that's in now, and then I'll do the second one again, plug it in into the ribbon connector, there we go, and then push down the collars, okay? So they are now locked into position and what you do to get it back in, back together is you drop, push that back up through the hole where it sits, that's its natural sitting position. Now we take this cam and you can see there's the cam there and there's a little peg sticking out here, this peg, that peg goes towards the back corner. So we're going in like that, over that plastic boss, goes over this plastic boss here, okay. So I'm going to drop that down over, and you can do it with your fingers actually, quite happily. There he is, he's in position now, okay. Now we're going to take our plastic washer, if you've got one, don't worry if you don't have one. But if you've got one, you might as well put it back, because it makes it operate more smoothly. So everything's there for a reason. Drop that over the top. Finally, grab our spring, and drop him over the top too, and you've got it sitting there. And what the, the name of the game now is to manoeuvre this post here, into the middle of that boss without displacing your spring or your um, your cam or washer. So here we go, I'm going to have a go now. Slot it back in. If you need to, you can hold onto the connector. It'd be easier if you hold the connector from the top. I'm trying to work this back into position. It can be a little bit fiddly, but once it's there, you might need to just Take hold of the board just to free it up. As I say, it can be fiddly this, so you have to be a bit careful when you're putting it back together. I think I have another attempt here. And oh, my board dropped out. This is where it's useful having the locking connectors because then your ruin cables won't come unplugged. There we go. So back in, it's sitting down properly and what we need to do is just pop our three screws back in the holes, turn the dock over, one, two, this is a considerably fiddlier than the other dock, but if you're patient and take your time, I'm in a bit of a hurry here because I want the video to be too boring, is to then, once you've done those three screws up, turn the unit over, make sure everything looks like it's sitting correctly, which it is, the plastic um, part is sitting together. It's just a push down on here and just check that your, your dock works okay and you've got your latching mechanism incorrectly like that. So that's fine, okay? So what you can do then is do your four screws back up on the base plate. Hold onto the dock, don't let it spin around. Someone's done the torque on the screwdriver up to pretty high level actually, five. <laughs> okay, and then pop your four, four rubber feet back on. There you have it, the job done. So plug your iPod in, test the functions, make sure your lock is working. Um, if you do have any problems, then uh, email and Vivo Technical Support. Um, we can do everything we can. Uh, our object is to get the customer running. Um, and, and good luck with the uh, connector change. Thank you.